Joining me now, Nebraska Senator Pete Ricketts, new to the Senate, sir. Uh, welcome back to the Chris Alcedo Show. Some of your Republican colleagues have colluded with leftists in the Democrat Party to take away our Second Amendment rights and expand government power by placing restrictions on lawful gun ownership on the promise that we'd be safer. We're not. Wouldn't it be more prudent in your mind, sir, not to mention be more American, to expand freedom rather than limit it? And as the data shows, more guns, less crime, right, Senator? Well, thank you very much, Chris. And first of all, our thoughts and prayers go to the victims at Covenant Church and school and their families. This is terrible tragedy. I can't imagine how horrible this might be. And as horrible as this is, we know from the past that trying to put gun laws and restrictions in place is not the answer. The people who perpetrate these, and we have to do the investigation here, typically have mental health issues. And this is something that typically, again, uh, we'll have to investigate this one, but people know what's going on, or at least they see some of the warning signs. And so part of what we have to do is really educate people about when they see the warning signs that somebody might be doing a, an act like this, that we get to those people, provide them the mental health care. You can look at all sorts of cities that have very restrictive gun laws, and it doesn't do anything for reducing their crime. In fact, you look at Chicago or even Washington, D.C. here, they have, mm -hmm. you know, strict gun laws. In Washington, D.C., we've had 200 homicides uh, for both the last two years. So it, it, restrictive gun laws don't answer the question. The real issue is the people who are doing this, they have mental health issues. We have to get them before they reach the stage where they're going to commit something like this. And that's the real solution. And, and in fact, I talked a little bit about this in my maiden speech I just made on the floor of the Senate that, you know, the chief role of government is to keep us safe. And by going down the path of more gun restrictions, that's not keeping us safe. We've seen that. We've got to right. figure out other solutions, right. like we how to work with people before they act. Yeah, Senator, we've tried it uh, the Democrats' way and, and John Cornyn's way and Mitch McConnell's way, uh, stealing Americans' rights for, for decades. Why don't we try something different? Now, you brought up your floor speech. speech. Preserving our freedom was a major theme in your maiden speech on the Senate floor today. You also slammed the growing national security threat at the southern border and, and, and the Democrats' role in all this. Let's let, let the folks at home take a look at this. Undeniably, national security is paramount to the nation's freedom and prosperity. It's the federal government's most important responsibility. But the Biden administration has turned a blind eye to the humanitarian and security crisis at our southern border. Vulnerable people are dying, victims of the cartels. Fentanyl and other dangerous drugs are flooding into our nation. Boy, you said it, Senator. Over a million got away, 6.5 million illegal aliens, China's fentanyl poison flowing freely, as you mentioned. Women and children sold into sex slavery into the United States, sir. Since the only thing to do with Democrats is defeat them, address the illegal immigration enablers in the Republican Party, won't you? Shouldn't they be putting America first when it comes to the borders? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for example, Senator Fisher and I went to the southern border and saw firsthand what is going on down there. When the administration says that they have control of the border, that is just clearly not true. We were able to witness one night when we saw so many people coming across the border. And there's so many issues that are going on here from you know, let the catch and release policies of this administration to not resourcing it. You know, for example, in his budget, President Biden is proposing $355 million for more technology for the border, but he wants to put $3.9 billion, seven times more, into climate resiliency in the Department of Homeland Security alone. This is just about misplaced priorities by the Biden administration, their incompetence on the southern border that is literally letting millions of people cross. If they get captured, they, go, they get a court date for maybe four years down the road. And what do you think happens if you give somebody who crossed that river illegally a court date to come back in four years? Do you think they show up? It's an intelligence test. So we've got huge problems. If you go back and look at the last administration, they knew what to do to be able to reduce the amount of illegal crossings. Um, last or two years ago, my fellow governors and I went to the Southern Board and proposed a 10-point plan on how to do it. This is stuff that the Trump administration did that is tried and true. This is what we need to do to be able to control what's going on on our southern border that has so many terrible consequences, like the drugs that are flowing into my state that are killing young people there. 
Right. And Senator, we know it works. We know it works. Last thing I wanted to ask you is Americans are tired of the double standard that we're seeing out there. I don't know if you saw this story, but the press secretary for Katie Hobbs, the, she is the, the Democrats' new governor out there. She uh, has a history of, of making racist decisions. The, she put out a tweet in the wake of this shooting, this horrific shooting up there in Nashville with a woman brandishing guns saying, uh, us when we see transphobes. Now, she resigned today after the mounting backlash, but Twitter allowed her to, to keep her posts up because she's a leftist. And Katie Hobbs, as, as we mentioned, who has a, a very dubious past as far as race is concerned, she didn't fire this press secretary. Let me just ask you, if anyone in your staff promoted violence in this way, how would you handle it? Look, I think we all have to do it. I, I know I would have zero tolerance for this, and everybody has to have zero tolerance for this. We, one of the things we have to do is we have to get back to our founding values, the things that made this nation great. And one of them is protecting our liberties and being civil to each other in doing so and having debate and dialogue, not threatening violence. We got to remember that our founding values do not permit this at all. It's about who we are as Americans. And that means getting back to those principles that made this nation great. Senator Pete Ricketts, sir. Before we go, thank you so much. I want to thank you for supporting and helping Newsmax get back on DirecTV, supporting the American principle that all voices deserve to be heard. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your time.